everyone. This is uh, Sam for the Scottish Field W blog. Uh, in this in this time of uh, confusion for everyone, um, we thought we'd try and make make the best of things. So uh, this is the start of an irregular series of vlogs where we're going to go around and talk to people in a particular country, uh, make use of the fact that they all they all have less to do and are trapped inside, and how better to start this than uh, with Italian Velo Derby. So with me I have uh, six representatives from across Italy uh, to talk about Velo Derby in Italy and also about um, we have as part of the content uh, we're going to have a talk particularly over a um, a important event, important video play for Italy Italian Velo Derby. It's one of the bouts from the Velo Derby World Cup in 2018. So with that, I'm going to let everyone introduce themselves, so... Okay, shall I, yeah. shall I go? Yeah. So, uh, okay, it's Lojob, uh, Manu, uh, from Arpis, Roller Derby, uh, playing with the Arpis since uh, 2018, formerly part of uh, Amsterdam Roller Derby, uh, so where I began. So. Uh, I'm really glad you reached out because this was a uh, was a very very cool idea to to gather together and and try to you know relaunch also your podcast and there's never enough talk about derby so it's it's good in such a moment so thank you for uh, having us. Okay, mm, my turn now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, hi everyone. I'm Terminator from Criminal Bullets which is the roller derby team from Padua and we are um, we played our first scrimmage just two months ago and so we are a newborn team mm -hmm. uh, I also played with um, uh, Arpiz in Milan for one year and now uh, I'm very happy to be here with all of you and just to speak about Italian roller derby this amazing community and <laughs> you should mute yourself. Uh, you uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Hello, everybody. I am Federica Kula Suchu One from Poison Kittens Roller Derby Palermo. I play with my team called uh, Poison Kittens Roller Derby Palermo. I'm here because uh, I'm a. Uh, I play in the sud of Italy. Uh, my team is in, on the sud of Italy and I'm very proud to be there to speak about Roller Derby with you. Roller Derby is a big community of people, very, very interesting. We know each other because we are not so many in Italy and we organize many uh, bouts together to improve Roller Derby and also to uh, make some tournaments, some uh, game games. Um, my team is, uh, how I say, in the sud of Italy, so it could be a little bit more difficult sometimes to go to participate to the to the um, programs of the other teams. But we try to do the best because we want to improve our way to skate, but also because we want to meet uh, sometime as possible the other teams. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy to be there to participate to this conversation. So thank you so much. Well, thank you for coming. And uh, see you later. <laughs> we speak later. Hi, I'm Anet from Bianguana Vicenza. And uh, I skate also in Italy. And I'm here today as a representative for Team Italy. Um, yeah, that's it. I skate uh, since 2014. And I'm part of Team Italy since uh, 2017, I think. Yeah, more or less. Um, yeah, we will uh, take a look at the game from the World Cup uh, uh, later. So I'm looking forward to it because I remember it was a really good game. Okay. Hi, uh, I'm Nicola. Uh, Nicolas Rage, that's their name. Uh, and I'm sorry I don't have a webcam, so I hope uh, you can... My voice is sufficient. It's sufficient. And I'm here as a representative for the officials of uh, Italy. I'm uh, a referee. 
and uh, I'm also a player for some time <laughs> in the in the men's team Italy and in the Wood Gang. Uh, I um, I started to skating in 2015, and until now I never stopped. I hope to don't stop for many years. <laughs> And I'm really happy to be here today and thank you to Stamp to let us to speak about the Italy roller derby. Thank you. Hello, this is uh, Furio, uh, Team Italy's captain uh, since uh, 2017, uh, part of Team Italy since uh, 2015. And uh, yeah, I'm very glad to be here as well. And. Uh, Thank you for this opportunity to uh, speak up about uh, uh, what's going on in uh, Italian roller derby. Uh, it's a pleasure to have all of you. So uh, I know that you had all had some things, things you wanted to talk about, but I guess I'd like to start because people who are watching this might not know the context of Italian roller derby about how, ro how Italian roller derby started and a bit of an introduction to how roller derby is in Italy. I mean. It is obviously different now, but it's different for all of us. But there's the, a brief precy of the history of roller derby. If you, any of you have a, things to say about how it started. Who wants to go? Well, uh, um, I think uh, who is the, the oldest member of the gang here <laughs> in terms of derby, eh? not mm -hmm. in terms of, of age, uh, would probably be best to tell a bit of a story. Okay, but maybe, I don't know. I think I am one of the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we started out uh, in, uh, I think it was 2012, um, when uh, a couple of teams, um, I think uh, um, RPs and um, Alpen Rockets from uh, Bozen, uh, they started a team, I, I think almost simultaneously and then uh, um, other other uh, cities all over Italy uh, started to um, create a team uh, but uh, we were sort of uh, really uh, disconnected at the beginning uh, because we were so far and uh, there were so few teams uh, but then there was an event uh, that catalyzed uh, all the attention and uh, all the uh, efforts uh, throughout Italy and it was a boot camp that was held in uh, Milan in 2013 and that was uh, the real first chance for all of us uh, to meet up and uh, know each other and uh, I think from there uh, we really uh, s started to uh, organize events, uh, joint events um, to participate to each other's bouts and games and scrimmages and from there I think we never stopped actually uh, we always uh, supported each other uh, as uh, referees, NSOs and uh, coaching advices and uh, all that comes with, uh, with Rolls Derby um, yeah that's uh, pretty much it um, I don't know if anyone wants to add anything on it. I mean, uh, so Terminator, uh, from uh, from the, f the, f the most recent league to actually play games. I mean, you have a con you have sort of yeah. the opposite <laughs> perspective. So, do you have a feeling about how Roller Derby is growing in Italy, or how it is for newer yeah, teams? Yeah, I think I think that uh, we are not so much playing Roller Derby in Italy, so it gives us the, us the opportunity to be. Uh, more connected with each other and also for us for criminal bullets it was very important to um, before uh, starting playing uh, to go to other cities and see how the tournaments were organized and help like with doing an SO and ref and all the stuff and I think that also in our city also our team is very important uh, also the strong values that link all each other and and everyone 
from from Bozen, which is in the near in the northern of Italy, to poison kittens in Palermo. We are so linked to each other, and it's also beautiful when we have the opportunity, like in Skier, which was a tournament in June last year, to see each other and spend some time together and eat the truck together, and it's also important for teams like us that uh, has not so much experience uh, also to learn to play to see other types of games and we hear the the support from the other teams especially also from can i from yeah can i add something yeah yeah Okay, so uh, yeah, what Teresa actually said, it is true, but of course it's not always all vanilla. I mean, uh, yes. because that looks like a, a fairy tale mm. and oh, it's all vanilla <laughs> and beautiful. It, it is quite, no, it's indeed correct that we are few people. So you, you, uh, you know, you cannot uh, uh, having a bad vibe because with such a, uh, you know, few people to, to play and we are trying more and more to widen the, the, the community, of course, but there's quite strong, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, rivalry also between uh, amongst the teams, which is a healthy rivalry, of course, uh, but which, you know, keeps you going and keeps you willing to improve yourself and grow as a skater, grow, grow as a team. Uh, opening, you know, it shows also uh, all the B teams that we are, you know, trying to, to have in order to, to keep more people joining the, the community. I don't know if I said something wrong, uh, but uh, I do feel that there is a rivalry also. It's not just a vanilla... It's insane a rivalry. <laughs> yes, it is. It's, it's healthy. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, we hold, we have leagues and things, right? You've Competition is competition is healthy as long as it's not it's competition and not yeah. Uh, no, no, of course it's yeah. competition. Yeah. I mean, I mean it. It's a, it's, yeah. a, it's a healthy, super healthy competition. That's that's for sure. Even if we are, uh, I don't know how many things. Yeah. So um, I guess we're also you're from all over Italy. I mean, is is it, is it, is Will there be in the north of Italy different from will there be in the south? Because I mean, the north is more populous and <laughs> closer to Switzerland and so on. So, do you find there's a difference? So, what I think about is that when I met other team during the bo boot, I always hear the same about teams. So we have all the same problems in general because there are many. For example, one of the things that you hear so much is that for example during the practice we should have to be i don't know 10 11 people and always we are three or four mm -hmm. but i think the problem that we have uh, on the sud of italy is something like organization because we haven't a uh, good place where skates because skate doesn't be considered uh, an important sport mm -hmm. so here in palermo uh, we haven't a place where we can skate uh, a covered place so we can't organize many events and we would like to because we can guarantee uh, a, a covered floor where we can skate together. So we organize two important events for us. Uh, you can find some information about it because the event is called the Scream Magic uh, for our uh, friends that doesn't be died. Um, but we can do it only once because this year, for example, we asked for a covered place and we didn't found it because <laughs> anybody wants to give us a, a place where skate. So we skate in winter, summer. So in all the season of the year, we skate in an open air place. So we have many problems about it. But we love to do derby. So <laughs> we believe in, the, in derby. So we continue going to all the events around Italy and uh, to play but it's a little bit more difficult I think for us because we have to move mm -hmm. but all the team have to move naturally but we have to move because we are more far so yeah. it's a little bit but now um, in this year we founded no no we poison kittens 
the Italian league decided to found a league called LIRD, mm -hmm. Lega Italiana Roller Derby. So we have tried to link more all the team around Italy, organizing events and organizing tournaments to try to create a link, a strong link between the, all the team around Italy and also to improve our way to skate around Italy because there are team who are more lucky because near they can play together more and team like me, mine and other team that can have the, the time to face with you reality and a skater. So mm -hmm. no, it's, it's always it's always difficult being the team that is further away, right? Uh, I, because I mean, the same thing happens in Scotland. I mean, we have we have a league in Orkney, and so they to get anywhere they have to either take a ferry or a, or fly. Um, so they they have never hosted a game yet. They they tried to host a tournament last year, and it didn't quite happen there. They wanted to host something this year, but obviously that probably isn't going to happen when it was going to happen for obvious reasons. Uh, so, you know, I, I think it's one of those unfortunately common problems being members of a league or the league in your region that's further away from everything than everyone else because, you know. Yeah, it's, very, it's very hard uh, just to to be together with the others when uh, you're so far away and uh, you need to plan everything ahead uh, because it's not that uh, you take your car in the morning and uh, in two hours you're where you need to be. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like you need to leave uh, a day a day earlier and then you need a place to stay in the night uh, and uh, you need to plan the return. So yeah, it's very, it's very hard for the ones who are very, very far away. Uh, not to, uh, uh, I would say, a driving distance uh, to the places where the events uh, take place. So, yeah, that's um, something that uh, has been bothering us mm -hmm. uh, for a long time for the teams that are in the in the south rather than the north or or the center. But uh, I think we made it work uh, so far with the great efforts but uh, it worked uh, so I don't think anyone has been um, left out from from uh, from from anything that uh, the Italian run derby has been so far so we're pretty glad from the, for the results we got and I mean so from an officiating perspective so uh, Nicola um, yeah. how is it for how is it for officials because I know that in Scotland certainly yeah. our officials travel everywhere it's so hard to lie. For <laughs> us, it's really hard to realize because we are few, mm -hmm. and I think there is no more than 10, 15 referee in Italy, and most of them are also player. Mm -hmm. So if their team is playing, they cannot ref mm -hmm. because they have to play. <laughs> and uh, we we move very. Uh, <laughs> we we have to move too much <laughs> too much because uh, to cover all the all the the, the the match we ask also many times to uh, outer ref so from uh, France uh, England uh, Germany but uh, I'm trying with uh, the help uh, of uh, uh, Elektra um, Sergeant Bernice uh, to improve the number of referee <laughs> in Italy, so to, imp to improve the, the, the skills. Uh, we are making officials clinic. Uh, we made one uh, uh, in... It was when? In November? It was November, yeah. November, yes. In Rome. In Rome. And uh, last day I repeated it, uh, last week, I repeated it uh, to some team uh, in a video conference and we, we are trying really to uh, grow up uh, the official uh, crews mm -hmm. but uh, it's an, it's really hard also in Italy most because uh, uh, the referee the officials 
are bad people. <laughs> because in Italy, with with uh, the standard view of uh, soccer, the the officials mm. are a boo, bad people, bad people. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're the third team, right? Um, that yeah. everyone wants to win. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a thing. It's a cultural thing, right? And I mean, uh, you get, we try to, I mean, well, there'll be tries to stamp that out, but I know, I know we've had people very rarely try and boo, boo people in in tournaments, and you try and snap it out. But uh, uh, Anek, I think you had something to say. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking uh, uh, it was before actually, <laughs> so it's not relevant to this matter. But uh, uh, about the officials in general, um, for my league, is I think it's more easy now. It's not easy, but it's a little bit more easy because we are playing uh, quite only um, sanctioned games yeah. um, so we have a lot of uh, referees from uh, abroad that come to officiate our events so yeah we struggle a bit but it's not so bad mm -hmm. but I know that for other teams in Italy that they are not uh, affiliated mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, it's more difficult because um, officials don't travel for um, officiate a scrimmage or a game. Or a regular they game, yeah. 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 They have lots of game, a lot of places to do, to, to go. So, yeah, sometimes uh, we all, all our team uh, try to help the others. Also, if they are not the proper referees or NSOs, but we have a lot of help from all the teams for the NSO and people who wanna. There are um, more and more people that wanna try to referee, mm -hmm. do referees also, and yeah. But it's not so easy when you skate and you play, and you have your own events and bouts uh, at home and away, and you have to go around for other team games. So yeah. We are not so many people, so it's every time a little bit uh, uh, difficult. Yeah. So, oh no, yes, no job. Uh, no, this this is a good point of discussion also because we should definitely underline that we should definitely improve the culture around being a referee and being helpful for all the community because what Nicola uh, Nicola said, it's it's still seen as something not really interesting or not really nice to do being a ref while uh, maybe we should just give you know a little push to people to improve their uh, you know their knowledge about the rules because sometimes people are just a bit afraid of oh my god i i don't know because <laughs> let's be honest it's a super tough game to follow not even playing but from outside so uh, i think we, we should, should work on that and, and you know push people to, to be more interested yes it's a uh, real it's, it's true that uh, many people um, don't want to try uh, to play as a referee because in, in my opinion we play like both the team uh, and because it, it's really they think it's really difficult to uh, officiate it's true that it's not simple but i think uh, it's really enjoying to uh, officiate a game it's uh, um, when you see uh, the both team are uh, uh, happy they are uh, they're really really happy for the game uh, they are playing uh, I'm enjoying my officiating. Mm. Uh, uh, it's like playing the, ga the game, but in another uh, matter, in another view, another side. Mm -hmm. A and uh, uh, if uh, people start to think about that, n n normally they start to enjoy to, p to officiate because uh, they uh, think they understand that we are uh, uh, important and uh, they uh, they start to be uh, happy 
when the, the people is happy, <laughs> when the, the player are happy, when the, the crowd is happy. And it's difficult to make people understand that. We are not uh, the, a police. Mm -hmm. We are a crew. Yes. Yeah, I think... We I even have a bit of a trouble with police, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> but no, I, mean, I think you're right. I, mean, I think, as you said, I mean, there's a tendency for people to sometimes think as officials as spoiling people's fun, um, when the whole point is to make the... If you think of officials as facilitators, you're making the game run smoothly and yes. properly, then that's exactly. a mindset you have to, you know, inculcate, right? Exactly, exactly. Our first priority is safety and the... Uh, the the game will flow uh, will have to flow uh, without problem. Mm -hmm. This is the most important thing. Give, giving penalties is uh, is only to make uh, the people happier <laughs> for for the referee <laughs> for the referee crew. <laughs> so, does anyone else have any? I mean, any things they ha any feelings and thoughts they had to talk about? I know you had some. Yep. I know you had some things so queued up. You wanted to say. Oh no! Yeah, I was uh, just uh, adding something on the referee side. I was felt uh, relieved every time I uh, had a referee shirt on uh, because you can put your skates on and participate to a game without uh, caring about the result. Uh, <laughs> so it's always something that uh, uh, gives you. Um, I don't know. Um, of a, um, a sentiment that is uh, like uh, okay i'm here I'm, I, I have my skates on i i can watch the game really close mm -hmm. i can uh, enjoy the game but i don't care at all about the results so it's always uh, a different way to uh, to live lure draw derby i think and uh, i think it's very useful uh, both from uh, uh, your um, uh, skills uh, and uh, um, game understanding uh, skills uh, because always uh, maybe you, you are a great skater but uh, you can't understand the game so if you leave the game really close like the referees do uh, I think you can, uh, you can uh, gather some information that otherwise uh, you are going to miss only watching it uh, on TV or from uh, from the crowd, so it's uh, really helpful, also for yourself, not only for uh, the teams that are playing. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's definitely a different perspective, right? The um, the referee's perspective, because it's more intense, um, perhaps than a spectator's a spectator's viewpoint, or even from an announcer's viewpoint, because obviously, announcers also need to observe the game in a different way than a mm -hmm. um, than a just someone watching it. Uh, um, I guess that leads interesting into uh, rewatching games. So, how many of you? Uh, I do. Or I gather that a lot of you have been rewatching a lot of footage and doing um, a lot of um, a lot of a lot of group footage analysis recently. Uh, so, do you remember if uh, we can see Annika in this game? Uh, I. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think he was saying about general footage watching, no? Well, yeah, but, okay. yeah, but that too. Oh. I mean, we'll lead into it. Oh. Um, okay. It's a segue. Um, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so I mean, footage, footage review in general, I mean, I guess, um, talk about highlights. Um, do any of you have a, a highlight for, I mean, other than the thing we're going to watch, a highlight for your derby career or for your team if, or for Italian derby that you think is an important if people wanted to get into Italian World Derby and see what it's about, what would they? What would you recommend that they look up on the internet? <laughs> well, uh, we do we do have footage of the uh, tournament that is held like uh, yes. uh, almost every year in uh, Bolzano, but uh, I think the quality of the footage is not is not the best. And uh, yeah, but uh, if you want uh, if you want a taste Italian road derby, you should definitely 
uh, check that out because there are um, uh, last last uh, uh, last year there was there were six teams or eight teams eight eight teams yeah. eight teams eight teams so, like almost <laughs> all the teams that <laughs> that uh, today are playing road derby uh, in Italy were participating uh, one way or another uh, to this tournament. So and this is uh, this is skating ring, right? Yeah, skating yeah. ring, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, also uh, a lot of the teams uh, um, were were taking um, skaters from other teams that were not participating into the event. Uh, so um, if one team wasn't present as a as an old team, there was uh, almost one member from each team in Italy. So it's uh, I think it's a good representation of uh, of our of our community um, yeah that's uh, that's the one I think anyone else have a favorite game I mean, it could also be a favorite game you were in we were reminiscing <laughs> oh well oh well <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've played um, with RPs, some bouts and some, uh, but Manu, don't be mad <laughs> with me. Uh, I no, have to no, say I'm not. I, have, I have to say that the first scrimmage with uh, Criminal Bullets was the most emotional one because uh, <laughs> we played two months ago, but the other girls who found, found the team started like five years ago. Uh, but didn't reach the number to play mm -hmm. and so it was uh, re really uh, mm -hmm. really emotional to finally hit the track uh, as a real team and so i will say i will say that yeah. that's, that's totally good it's super <laughs> nice you will be a bit of a harpy anyway yeah, for forever. the rest of your life yeah and 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 okay i can tell my my two cents we've been We've been to Sweden recently in December, and Teresa was there as well. <laughs> uh, we had a bit of a, uh, a taste of what is the Swedish uh, yeah. roller derby. We've been in Gothenburg for two games in a row in one day. Uh, one with uh, Dot City, the B team, mm -hmm. and the other one was uh, Gothenburg uh, roller derby. They have a new uh, setup of the team. I think they are called uh, AQ Warriors now. Anyway, that was interesting. It was really good. Going abroad, big battle. Uh, it was kind of uh, two tough games, so it was was very good. And and it's online also. Mm -hmm. Both the teams uh, are uh, put on YouTube the the footage, so that can be also nice. But yeah. <laughs> If I have to think about all the games, uh, I think uh, the game that um, was like one of my favorite was the 2017 uh, Skate Team Ring Final mm -hmm. because um, we as the Anguanas won against Arpins and was the first time for us and they were they were um, born before us and they were the better team in Italy for all the year before. And it was quite uh, challenging for us because we were newer, and uh, yeah, it was good because we we want to win, but you know you don't know until you play, and uh, yeah. So I remember all the team uh, did uh, so great there, and yeah, it was um, one of my favorites. But also other games that we played against. Uh, uh, another one game that uh, I loved uh, was against uh, Madrid Royal Derby that we played in Milano and we played in a tournament organized uh, by Arpies and uh, us together last, last uh, autumn, not 2019, the year before and all the games at the World Cup too mm -hmm. because there, there was a special uh, atmosphere with, from, with people from uh, all, of, all of the world uh, and yeah it was a great experience mm -hmm. I can go forever with this and <laughs> 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 stop in that yeah. uh, for me I can speak uh, both as a, 
uh, referee and as a player. <laughs> as a player, I think uh, my preferred game uh, was the first um, the first World Cup uh, I ever had in um, Calgary, mm. uh, playing uh, against uh, the oh my God, Chile. it was uh, Chile. 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 Oh yes, yes, yes. Because uh, it, it was one of mm, I wasn't so expert, so uh, for me I think it was the fourth, fifth, fifth game ever. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Furio, you remember better than me. Yeah, I think so. I think we had only one game, uh, real game uh, against uh, Ireland, and uh, yes. that was pretty much it. Yeah, and because uh, you were yeah, because you were you. Did you come really? third in your group? I think. Yeah, but anyway, yes. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we was uh, really newborn mm -hmm. because we grew up in nine months, so it's really a newborn team <laughs> at the at the moment. And uh, uh, I remember this game; it was uh, really challenging and uh, exciting. It, it was. Uh, uh, not uh, an angry game, but are very really competitive, but dirty game, and uh, I enjoyed it so much. As a referee, <laughs> I think I can tell uh, the first uh, foreign game I ever referred, or I've ever played as a referee. It was uh, in uh, Porto, again uh, Porto against. Uh, um, Birmingham, I think I don't remember, mm -hmm. and it was for me a completely new experience because uh, I ever uh, refed uh, in uh, Italy with uh, some uh, English or German uh, referee as a ref, and uh, but many of them we was Italian people. Here we, I was uh, alone <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of. Uh, uh, people who speak uh, really good English uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I was oh my god <laughs> I have to start to run or uh, I will die <laughs> and uh, I hope uh, I will start to run <laughs> um, I, I think this was uh, my preferred game because uh, I really improved myself really really good this game. Yeah, some, sometimes being thrown into the, the the fire is actually the best way of, you know, improving, even if it's terrifying at the time. Yeah. Okay. I go. Yeah. Can I go. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Mm, we didn't play so many games during our life, so I think we play twenty games. But I think all of this game teach me something very important. And my favorite game. Uh, was uh, in Rome, I don't remember when, I think November, something like that. Um, we play again against Rome and against uh, Anguana Spin B. For me, it was very uh, important because I always play like Jammer, but I didn't like to play like Jammer. I would like to play like Blogger in all my life, uh, <laughs> derby life, but the first time in this game I feel like a jammer so I have fun playing like a jammer uh, so for this for this reason it was very important we lose for very few points the ga the, the, the game mm -hmm. but I think we play a really good uh, game so I was very proud of my team uh, so for, for this reason it was my best game <laughs> And Manu was with us because <laughs> Manu play with us many. I think three times, no Manu. No, actually three people in this chat <laughs> were in the yeah, same yeah. game. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I, no, no, no. I mean with Poison Kit and Terai. No, no. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, two times, two times. But yeah, it's funny times. that you that you say. Also, Anek was there, so we were. Yeah, um, yeah, we against. Oh, yeah. <laughs> together, it was good. I agree, I agree. That was was good fun. Was was a really yeah. a really good game, a really good day actually. So yes. and was just five points. So mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs>
yeah. at the good. end, at the end of the game. Yes. Well, you know, it's it's this is derby, so yeah. very very good. Yes. It was good. Yes. Yes. I, I really enjoyed it. And sometimes, you know, yeah. sometimes you appreciate those points more if there's only five of them. Um, <laughs> Yeah, let's not. Say <laughs> <laughs> for, for yeah. We appreciated that that part. Yeah. Yes, but but uh, indeed, I I think also again, Anik was there uh, supporting their her B team. The okay, team. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think was fun. Was was yeah. a fair game. Was was very uh, strong because at the end was was played like with a knife in your <laughs> in mm. your teeth because yeah. tough. Yeah, but it was good also for us because our B team started like three years ago. But for the first game, uh, we had uh, always people from the A, A, A team. Uh, but this year in Rome, we were two from the A team. I was there and another skater, uh, Manu. Um, Frankenstein was there playing with the B team, but all uh, the other were player from just from the B team. Uh, and they did really great. We were super happy and they were super happy and proud because they are starting to fill a whole team mm. without uh, uh, older or more experienced skater. So I think it's good. We, we used some years to get there because we are like 25 now, around 25. That is not a bad number for you. It's Italy. a good number. It's a good number. They yeah, it's a good number. Yeah. So now we can have two team teams, but before that we we mix it then. Huh? Well, actually, so lots of teams. I think uh, I think this is European, right? I'm, uh, I, uh, mm. I must say I've seen it abroad, like. You have like cross yeah. crossover, crossover people. Yeah. yeah. So you have two skaters to going up and to yeah. go down to mm -hmm. support. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To have C D teams like really yeah. big. But, but I think team. it's good that you do like this because uh, maybe there are people from the A team uh, that um, uh, are willing to uh, go and play with the B team and help them, or they need uh, to do that because they are not. Uh, the people who speak the most uh, in the team and everything, so it helps them and it helps the, the yeah. less experienced skater to um, learn what to do from people that skate from it's more a, time and it's, it's a mix. No? It's a, it's a but knowledge. it's good when you can have, um, like our big team, I speak for my team now, uh, our big team that now can have uh, almost uh, just people from the B team, okay, it's not a, a completely separation because we train together. But just for for who who is playing with uh, the B team is, um, I think is like a goal because they say, okay, we don't need uh, to have a more experienced player to do well. We are starting to, um, to do it. We are uh, improving and we can, can play good and do that. I don't know if this makes sense. No, no, it does. It yeah. Yes, it does. Okay. <laughs> to me, that's just like, <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I think it's good. That's cool. Community growing. Mm -hmm. So also the RPs have a B team now. So <laughs> it's, it's good. But then, but then the coronavirus started. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's 2020 is going to be our year. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Uh, we, Milan was actually the first the first uh, city to get in lockdown mm -hmm. <laughs> with uh, I think with Vicenza which is even better. No, but but nothing I uh, I must say not just for the RPs uh, nothing is is lost. We're just uh, oh. acting as normal. The team uh, I, I think everyone in Italy the teams is uh, going on uh, do other activities and and conference calls. Off and skate. Sorry, <laughs> off skate. Mm -hmm. of off skate. <laughs> Seriously, so it's it's good. It's good. We're gonna get stronger from mm -hmm. uh, from this for sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, shall we go to the second section of this thing and watch a game and comment on it? Um, I think we should do that. Uh, so yeah. I'm going to see if I can get this to share and work. So bear with me a second. Uh, uh, Any, 
anyway, if Can I you see stuff? something to Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, of course. Something to the game. I've seen this is a funny story. I've watched this game in Amsterdam in a pub. So I actually <laughs> formally seen Anek in television before then or in person. <laughs> so, yeah, and all oh. my team members because Halo and all the rest of yeah. the artists. So Anek is <laughs> your uh a TV, TV star, you <laughs> see. Uh, it was actually no. funny because in Amsterdam we had the subscription of the World Cup, you know, to follow Team Netherlands. Uh, everybody was crazy. So I said, guys, because I am Italian, so if, if you don't mind, I, I want to watch Italy as well. And I've <laughs> seen I uh, with Team Ireland, or, or uh, yeah, it was Ireland, uh, I think. And this game as well. So formally, uh, I support Iceland. Iceland. Yeah. Yes. Iceland. Yes. So I supported my team, uh, my my country, also from from abroad. <laughs> right, so it was a good game. So do we want audio with this, or do we want to play it without audio and comment over the top? Mm, I, I, I think. Uh, I don't know this, but I, I take a look at the video like uh, last week, uh, mm -hmm. and I think there is no announcer. No, no there, there are announcers. Um, yeah? Yeah. So maybe it was the wrong link, because the one that Lara sent us on the chat. Well, uh, so I have, a t I ha I have the official um, Team Indigenous versus uh, Team Italy okay. 2018 link. Uh, so I think it's better without an announcer, maybe. Okay, mm. okay I, will, yeah, I, I will turn off... Um, the audio then and then okay. Sam also giving the fact that two of the people in this chat were on uh, there so yes. it's also nice to maybe you know have Anne and Furio to oh no, no exactly juicy, yes yeah juicy details great in that case um I'll play it now um we're going to get there's going to be a little bit of introduction where we won't be able to hear the announcers, uh, but uh, then we'll get in. But yes, feel free to commentate, especially the people who are playing. Um, or um Furio, I count on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super shy, so I'm trying. So you see, there are announcers. Look, you see, uh, we can't hear them. Um, but they're just difficult. They're talking about how care. I know that they're talking about how excited they are. Um, because I watched, I've literally watched the first, um, the first about minute of this several times trying to queue things up. But um, so this was, I think, your first game. Um, yeah. At the yeah, it was the first game on uh, Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we were like super excited to play, but also super not scared, but. We didn't really know what to expect because they know that they were a pretty new team mm -hmm. because they are people from different places and but they have a really good skater so yeah and finally you will see it in the game that they start uh, not so good but they improve a lot during the game no and spoilers <laughs> <laughs> but it's just about the gameplay, you know. You see that because they never they never trained together before the together, right? I think maybe one time. I'm not really sure. That, yeah, they had they had one time, so and they had yeah. some conference calls, but that's about it. So yeah, so you see that they they know it start to know each other better during the games and during all the World Cup. Here yeah. we go. You can see that, yeah. Who's jamming for, for us here? Is, is Seal yeah. or Quack? No, it's Dire Wolf. No, it's Dire Wolf. Dire Wolf. <laughs> wow, lover. He's a hell of a jammer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super excited. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> is it lagging so. to you too? No. no. Mine. Are you getting lag? No. Okay. Well, am, I, am I the only one? Okay. Yeah. Here we go. So I think, yes, so this was, um, as you said, I think Team Indigenous was their first game as well and only I think their second game they yeah. played together as a team. So you can see that, um, I mean, Italy is obviously more cohesive um, than uh, the Indigenous. Yes, they're more users to play together. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, who is in this line, Furio, uh, in our line, of course? Uh, Elo? Uh, wait a second, uh, because I, I was trying to fix my uh, connection. It was uh, Elo, uh, Betty okay. Warp, uh, Betty Warp? And, um, the number zero, I don't uh, remember the name. Uh. Uh, Arancio. 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 Yeah. Arancio. Yeah. yeah, Daniela, and uh, she's from London. Okay, now uh, there is Anek, uh, yes. Mickey Maniac. Lemon uh, and uh, Lara. Lara. Okay, yes. this, and the jammer this, is uh, Steve. The jammer is, is Steve. Uh, yeah, uh, given the name of this wall, I think is the friendly wall <laughs> of this. <Yeah. laughs> Damn. <laughs> like, wow. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, a, that's quite a wall. <laughs> that's a uh, wall that can be static all the game. <laughs> Because nobody can move it. I'm movable, for real. So lemon is. Uh, lemon is the pivot. pivot. Yeah. Okay. Lemon, Lara, Maki, Anek, Linda. Maki is the number six nine six. Uh, Anek is number one three. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Linda. Linda was in our. Uh, Line, but not on that jump. Now it's same wall as before with yes. the crazy eyes. Crazy eyes, number eight yeah, eight. eight. Arancio, that is uh, number zero. Uh, She's Elo, from number, which team? Uh, she used to play with um, uh, Milton Keys and then uh, London Roller Roller Derby. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I don't, I don't know if she still playing. Uh, um, sure. There were a lot of skaters that retired after this World Cup because they were, a lot of them were hanging on for um, yeah. for the big thing. Um, so it's possible. Um, yeah. I know that she was playing after the World Cup, but I'm not sure that if she is playing now. So you were saying there are. So did if you remember what your structure was? Did you have effectively two alternating walls, and then you had a three deep jammer rotation? I think. For this, for uh, this yeah, I, I think yeah. it was three people, right, guys? It was uh, Seals, uh, former RP, uh, Quack, uh, which is an Anguana, Dyer. Yes. The, the jammer was who's here mm -hmm. now, yeah. who's playing. And yeah, then we, so we had three five, jammers. But we had uh, five five jammers in the roster, oh. and uh, yeah, in the roster, not uh, in the in the game. Oh. Uh, so in the full roster, but uh, we always use the uh, three jammers rotation in each game. Okay. And were you expect so? Were you expecting this to be a hard game or um, or a um, or an easy game, relatively speaking? And was, was this was this your we absolutely have to win um, roster, or was this a slightly more relaxed roster because you were easing yourselves in? So the point is, with uh, with this format of the uh, World Cup, uh, with the uh, differentials always uh, being uh, such an important part of uh, of the ranking, uh, you always feel like uh, you need to uh, be a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, uh, be hundred percent and respect the predictions. Uh, otherwise, be down the ranking. And uh, with the, I think it was 38 teams, uh, something like that. It was 38, it's yeah. Really easy, yeah. It's really easy to lose, like, uh, I don't know, five ranking positions uh, just for a bunch of points. Mm -hmm. So you really need to be uh, careful. And uh, even one, uh, one jammer penalty can, uh, can really change uh, the, the whole uh, shape of your tournament. As it, as it, as it happened uh, for us, uh, with Iceland, yes, uh, because we had uh, we had to do like uh, thirteen points for each point that Iceland got, mm -hmm. and uh, we uh, we were I think we were there uh, for the all for the all uh, bout, and then in the last ten minutes we got a jammer penalty, mm. and they had uh, like something like eight points, yeah. so that meant that we had to to score. Uh, for uh, 100, near, uh, nearly 100, 100 points, yeah, yeah. 100 points in, in 10 minutes and uh, of course that was impossible mm -hmm. and uh, we actually lost some uh, ranking positions for only one jammer penalty so yeah, yeah. 
but but I think in my opinion at the end uh, the um, final uh, positioning of the World Cup was quite right. I, I don't think uh, that there were teams that uh, deserve to be higher or uh, lower at the, in the final um, uh, ranking. I, yeah. yeah, in final ranking. I mean, I don't think it changed. As, as, as the person who developed the ranking, um, the only team I re was really that worried about was Korea because they played their last game without um, one of their star jammers uh, because because uh, she was ill. Um, and um, that did push them down a little bit. And in the post hoc analysis, uh, I did some analysis and showed that if you remove that game, their ranking changes a lot and you can actually essentially separate them between the games where she was ill and the games where she wasn't ill. So sometimes, sometimes you know, you can have a key player, um, but I think I think in were general you people turned out. Were you talking about Sam? Sorry. Uh, it was uh, shortstop. Shortstop. Oh right, I I just I just met her actually in Bangkok uh, in mm -hmm. December. I attended uh, uh, an event, right? And yeah, she was there by chance, so I attended a um, a nice training <laughs> from her. So it was was quite nice to you know meet someone by chance totally because was not related to roller derby mm -hmm. staying there she's a lovely person she is yeah she's been committing yeah, yeah, she is. she's been committing herself to try and building up um essentially roller derby in asia and especially in korea and related areas so that's why she's been doing a lot of stuff like this so yeah thailand has the same the same mm -hmm. issue the, the people there folks there were talking about this big issue that they are the Bangkok one is the only mm -hmm. league yeah. there, so it's the oh, only league yeah. in the whole Thailand. So they are joining the, the people from Hong Kong <laughs> to play actually roller derby. So at some point, you know, when you come back to Italy and you can have, you know, a couple of game, one game every month, and you can play whenever you want, you can do scrimmages. You feel like okay, that's, that's actually not I'm really lucky. Yeah, yeah. Yes. No, I'm yes, definitely. I mean, Asian derby is. I mean, we're not to talk about this is about Italy, really, but um, Asian Derby is building up. I mean, there's now, there is a team uh, in Bali now. Um, they're not get routing yet, but there's a team in Bali. Um, and there's a lot of teams in uh, Japan. Well, a reasonable number of teams in Japan. So it's slowly building up. So um, I think Italians oh, yeah. will be super happy to visit Bali for yes. sure. Well, that was well, they, everyone. They had the, the yeah. they did they did hold a boot camp. They got Bolo Shakola to run a boot camp for them. Um, and oh, wow. it turns out that if you hold if you hold a boot camp um, coached by Bolo Shakola in Bali, a lot of people have you know suddenly found an excuse to go um, to go out to um, to Bali. Yeah. Uh, well, to the boot camp. Yes. I mean, I guess. Um, I mean, have Italian leagues done the same thing? Have you um, managed to tempt people by, especially if you're in that, you know, the south of Italy? Do you manage to tempt people with the, with the environs and the, um, the beautiful yeah, weather and we everything? Yeah, we always try. <laughs> <laughs> we always say that we are close to Venice. That is true. That you can reach Venice by train in half an hour. Mm -hmm. so yeah, a lot of people and a lot of teams that come in Vicenza, they also stay for a mini holiday, mm -hmm. no, a small holiday, yeah, they tried. Also, we had to cancel our trip later in, on 7th March, <laughs> and uh, teams uh, they and uh, officials were planning to extend their stay and having a little uh, holiday, and was not possible. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, we try to explain <laughs> that we have Venice, Verona, and lots of places that you can visit. So we, yeah. we try to do the same when we go play away. Mm -hmm. So if you can stay one, two days more, days more, it's always good to check out Verona. Mm -hmm. how, how long did you, how long did Team Italy stay over in Manchester and the UK when you came over for, for this time? Uh, I was there since, uh, Tuesday, mm -hmm. till Monday, so yeah, almost a week. Mm -hmm. yeah, Not everybody, too. but uh, yeah. Uh. Nice. But I mean, four days of that was the tournament, though. So um. <laughs> yeah. So and we had a little practice mm -hmm. on uh, Wednesday. So yeah, you have to 
you have to stay there for at least five days. Mm -hmm. Five and a half. I like Manchester. It's not bad, bad at all. It's, it's a nice big city. Mm -hmm. No? With yeah. Good nightlife. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. true. This is what I remember. It's not re there to be related. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm, well, I'm you sorry. Know, that's okay. So uh, I think this was the first power jam that um, Team Indigenous got. Watching the watching the. Yes, um, this is a power yeah. jam against yes. Italy. Yes. Uh huh. Uh, but, but a very ooh. yes. Say go to the finish. Yes, they managed the, the, yes. the team Italy managed to get the, a penalty for the for the indigenous jammer. Mm -hmm. mm. And speaking yeah, about we... officiating, mm -hmm. uh, uh, wh what I see uh, playing in the as uh, as a skater in the World Cup is that really the the the. the, the, the Officials, the, the officials crew are uh, uh, fantastic. <laughs> they're, they're really th the best uh, in, in the world. And I had uh, some problem in uh, Calgary because uh, I think that uh, American officials have a different way to check penalties mm. respect uh, European. Uh, Sometimes. Probably Fulio can pick uh, also. Uh, I think that uh, they have a, uh, we have a um, different balance of uh, the way uh, every penalty is uh, uh, called as a leg illegal and the penalty or uh, illegal and uh, so no no impact no penalty mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, between uh, European and uh, American uh, officials, the yeah, in they, huh? they they tend to in in uh, in the states they tend to let go a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, while here in Europe, in Italy uh, specifically, uh, <laughs> we <laughs> we, uh, uh, we we uh, don't. don't know. It's like it's like we always see something. That it's uh, uh, giving advantage to someone when, uh, especially when they use their their uh, their arms or their forearms. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, so I don't know why, but we all see that they're taking advantage of this. <laughs> so we always call penalties. But when we watch the games uh, played in the states or officiated by uh, United States uh, or, uh, for that matter, um, Canadian, yeah, foreign. Uh, yes. not European refs, mm -hmm. we see that they tend to let go a lot more than we do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, at the beginning we had a lot of uh, problems. <laughs> uh, from our problems. Uh, yeah. But yes, because uh, we was uh, okay, uh, we managed to get penalty on the opponent. Oh no. Oh, but <laughs> they're okay. Penalty. Yeah. Can I say something that maybe is more a question than mm -hmm. uh, because coming from another uh, from another league and and skating with the RPs uh, since two a uh, couple of years, I can see from this uh, from from this game that there has been a, in only two years a huge evolution in in the yes. game. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, right? yeah. I mean, uh, you can see it from I don't know. I'm just saying, yeah. But the offense that we now do as a normal practice here was kind of building up. Am I am I right? Yes, yes. We uh, if I I I'm, I don't know if can speak because uh, <laughs> I'm not a player <laughs> nor uh, uh, and maybe Anik I, I, because there's there's actually a nice frame I don't remember what minute but Anna is doing an offense uh, while the jam starts but it's not as strong as she does now for example um, it's just a touch it's something like okay I'll do this and then so uh, I seen the, 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 the difference from two years ago in, 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 in a practice that normally now it's a standard to the touch one player the plus one to go in offense um, I think uh, we 
started to we were already playing with the tri tripod and the person in office but as you see also at the start uh, we just keep doing the same thing so tripod and uh, offensive player in different position but it was that so um, yeah for sure we improved our game i think everybody you see new things coming out and but uh, i don't really know if um, uh, as team italy we um, we we used the um, team offense and uh, singular offense the but yeah it was pretty much that thing not something new strange or fancy just one people on offense uh, or uh, the team offense was the like classic thing that the jammer can touch the opposite wall and the other open from the wow. side uh, or um, just in uh, advance that was that so, yeah. but uh, i think two years uh, everybody improves a lot mm -hmm. yeah. Well, also, so, also the strategy of the game is, yeah. uh, is changing because mm -hmm. uh, I remember when uh, the wall uh, of four was uh, the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the box was the, oh, the, the most important thing to know and now oh no 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 now you have to play in three and one in offense uh, mm -hmm. every time oh. so the strategy is uh, changing continuously yeah, and I mean, some of that's driven by rules changes, and some of it's driven, as you say, by reaction, right? Yeah. But a, yeah. a strategy becomes popular, and ev everyone works on it, how to beat that strategy, right? It's a yeah. Yeah. My, my question then is, how come that a good power jam offense never comes out good? I don't <laughs> know. I'm really. Why? Why is so difficult? Because to, you know. <laughs> it's really more difficult to to do offense and gain lead uh, when uh, you don't have uh, the other jammer, I think. You think it's easier, but it's not like this. <laughs> Most of the time, uh, it's not no, like because uh, the other team is aware of your uh, offense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they keep moving, they never yeah. stop. And this yeah. is so frustrating. Or they stop too much. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is better. Yeah. It's something that if is, they don't run know. and stay, it's more difficult. Mm -hmm. Yes. That if also. people run. Also, yeah. also. But blocker yeah. are uh, becoming really strong uh, and also jammers. So I think for jammers, are <coughs> the game uh, is starting to be tougher than <laughs> years ago because the, some walls are really, really, really stable and and also fast for fast when they have to move sideways but uh, steady when somebody hits them so mm -hmm. it's a tough work <laughs> so would you say that's a change um for those of you who are who are mostly blockers is that a change that you've noticed that you've focused more perhaps on being agile as well as being able to because it sounds like what you're saying Anek, is that the difference is that now blockers are also faster and more agile than they used to be uh mm, yeah i i think so i think blockers but people but in general people who place is uh more here you are more more aware on your skates mm -hmm. so normally when you start people that are better on skate uh finish to be jammer because they can spin they can be more agile and everything so oh it, it happened that they can be jammer but as a blocker when you start to gain uh, agility and improve your skills you really see the difference on your game mm -hmm. but also Anek is is that true then uh, I'm attaching on what uh, what you are saying that actually the the jammer figure is changing from the the skinny yeah. fast one the what we call the spinjona, which is <laughs> a very <laughs> muscular jammer. Mm. And I think everyone uh, has their style, and their uh, there are uh, 
every kind of uh, body that can do different things. So I don't think there is one uh, best way to be a gemmer or a doctor. Know. But I think that the best people to gem or is the one that can adapt and change faster, faster, mm -hmm. faster. So if you can push, push, and then spin, and then push, and then change every time, uh, it's more difficult to, for a blocker. If you are just doing one thing, uh, it's more easy for the blocker to figure out what you're doing mm -hmm. and prevent you to do that. So, yeah. Sometimes, I, yeah, you just feel like following her is more disturbing than <laughs> stay where, I, at least me as a blocker, uh, stay where I am, stick to the plan, and yeah. that's it. Otherwise, uh, she makes you drunk. And <laughs> you don't have to move when they fake it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And, and stick where you are. I, at least this is me. Eh? Like, no job. Stay where you are. And, and <laughs> try to survive. That's <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's my tactic. Who? My, <laughs> mine. Nicola. Oh, that's your tactic. Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah I think it's pretty. Uh, it's a good tactic. I mean, you can try to survive. survive. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's the best tactic. Try to get on and, and yeah, get out the most. Of. But yeah, so I mean, talking about um, when we're to the Gemma thing, I mean, would you say, I think the thing you were, you were aiming for, low job, was also that maybe there used to be, and I know this used to be the case certainly in, in the UK <laughs> and in America, uh, there used to be a sort of stereotype that jammers were all the sort of small, agile people. Um, and I think you're both right in that over time there's been a sort of a broadening of what what you can be and be a jammer um, and people have you know I've seen some very I've seen some very big powerful people who might not have thought they could be jammers you know maybe you know 10 years ago jamming and it's, it's a different style but yes I, I yeah. think also that sorry I think also that um, initially uh, Jammer was selected uh, really uh, because they are uh, faster, smaller, mm -hmm. and uh, they more agile than a uh, blocker. But after a while, uh, all the people start to um, t train the to improve uh, in gym, uh, to train uh, their muscle, to train to be more uh, strong. Mm -hmm. And uh, also a smaller, faster, and agile jammer is stronger now mm -hmm. than before. Yeah. So mm, this really changed the, the, the also the blocker now are more uh, uh, um, stronger, mm, difficult to move, uh, the, the, and uh, also they improve their agility and uh, when uh, initially the the blocker was telling oh you have to be uh, stay like like low job stay here don't move mm -hmm. that's not true now yes it's a lot also more dynamic the are yeah. really move moving and uh, they are anywhere in the track mm -hmm. and I meant to stick to the plan eh? not, <laughs> not move, I mean. but it's, it's, it's also not true like though a, yeah I think all is changed uh, probably near the 2000, 2017 because mm -hmm. before that also the, 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 the rules changed after the 2017 if I remember good mm -hmm. yeah, and, they did. Uh, and the, the game in my opinion it become more uh, uh, I don't know the correct word, not mobile, but, but uh, moving. Uh, dynamic, maybe? Mobile. Dynamic. Dynamic. Dynamic, dynamic, yes. More dynamic. Yes, I think you're right. I think there was a, a lot of the changes in the 2017 rule set probably did enable this. Um, and for the better, I think, because a more dynamic game is perhaps better to watch. Um, uh, yeah, but I think it depends also on the level because now if you take a look at the highest level game, a lot of team uh, has 
really steady wall mm. and because they are so good so we that play and love roller derby we know that why they are playing like this but maybe people that don't know the roller I, I, I read a lot of conversation about this on the internet mm -hmm. and people was, too, too goofy. Yeah, <laughs> were saying that uh, for people that actually don't know the game uh, that kind of high level derby now can be like not so fun to watch uh, because just jammer do amazing stuff uh, but blocker are uh, steady and static and it's, it's harder perhaps to understand yes why I, they're doing something that's awesome even because it doesn't look like they're doing something that's yeah, impressive yeah, yeah. I would say that. but i personally like the game now as it is so and i'm not at that level so we are still running around the track <laughs> we are not <laughs> we are trying to <laughs> run around to <laughs> <laughs> we are trying to <laughs> improve that, yeah. So. yeah, but it's it's good also, uh, I might say something really uh, blatant, okay, but it's also good how is uh, uh, you need to build up the line where you are, I mm -hmm. mean, because yeah. having the same level of people in one line, it's something really difficult, so <laughs> you need people to adapt to mm -hmm. skater that are maybe not at the same level or fastness or uh, speed uh, so it's really good in, in the way you are a solo player and you care about what you are doing and you need to do 150 percent your best in the line you are in so it, it gives you the most but at the end of the day when you're blocking for example and you are blocking solo you're solo at the end, eventually the cavalry will come and join you, but in that very moment, you need to keep your best. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I make sense what I said. But mm -hmm. You need to rely on each member of the line, also as, as becoming independent. Mm, I'm not sure that I have understand what you are saying. <laughs> 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 yeah, just because uh, I think the main goal is to work with your teammate, with your line uh, in every time. Also, when you are alone on the track, you need to know where others are and you can work with them, but without them, I mean, it just makes sense, but like covering the track and everything. But I, I hate when I'm alone on the track for some reason or in front or behind because I'm completely bad at it. Mm. I, I feel when I'm with the, the others, even if we are together in a wall or uh, just covering the space and everything, can be working together to that too. Uh, I feel more in my comfort zone than when uh, I'm uh, behind or in front or whatever. So the goal is that. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Is what, what I mean. I'm not a really solo player, eh? as mm. you uh, know. So I think that uh, like. low job was uh, speaking that now uh, we are starting to improve also in solo playing. Sometimes you have to uh, play solo Manage because yourself. you are the last uh, or mm. you are the front uh, blocker and you are alone. And uh, I remember that the first. The, the first year uh, here in Italy, uh, without the brace, you was uh, nothing. <laughs> you were lost. Yes, you were lost. Now people is starting to improve their uh, capacity to block alone, uh, yeah. waiting for the the the, the teammates Ca to <laughs> yeah. come to help. Mm -hmm the cavalry to come and, and eventually save you from yeah. well, whatever is yeah, that really yeah. Meanwhile in 2018 we were 30 points ahead and then we in the last yes. And now we it's were. like yeah. 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was noticing. Yeah. 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 yeah, but yeah, it's, a, it's the last gem, it went our way. Uh, mm. So, okay. you know. <laughs> I mean, do, you look, at the, look at the wall, Lara Maki with 696, she's, a, she's an awesome blocker, 
And I think it's, it's a Linda. Linda. Okay. Linda. Oh gosh. Yes. Yeah, that's that's kind of a wall. Yes. I'm yes. Just <laughs> kind. Last, Unkind last wall. No lead. Scary mm. wall. A scary wall. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. oh, there's, there's, some, there's some very good. Um, this was a steady wall. Yeah. Speak, speaking of people being able to work semi independently, there's actually been some very good. Um, there was some very good work as a two wall there, actually, without the brace. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so yeah. even yeah, 2018, uh, it was. Yeah, that's where I think they're busy evolving. Um, they're starting to block uh, with the two uh, two skaters wall. Mm -hmm. rather than three or four so that's the uh, real improvement uh, mm -hmm. today's road derby so you have two people that can do offense and two people that uh, are very good defending the old track uh, look at this beautiful pin with yeah. Linda and Lara pinning the, the demer just there bam It's the it's the full beep time. Beep this was a half yeah. this was a half hour game. Um, it just they didn't adjust the um, the scoreboard to oh, look do at the full supporters. Time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 What to expect? So, yeah, we tr we say okay, we are tr we want to win this, of course, but we didn't really know how to, what to expect from them. So, and we knew that they have lots of good players. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and finally we managed to win. So we were super super happy. Yeah, it was a great way to start. <laughs> Did we already hear uh, uh, played the national anthem uh, with the sign language? No, uh, no, we didn't. Because uh, I know, I, we do I know you do. That. Yes, no. So I, did, I think the first time that happened was. No, it was Maybe you did. World Cup, but, uh, yeah, but uh, not in a 30 minutes game. No, yeah, because yeah, because the only time you had the national anthem, you had each had an anthem each. Um, Unless you got through to the through to the essentially the ranking game, they were the the final playoff games. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, just for the final. Yeah. So um, mostly because it was a very very const constrained schedule and there wasn't that much time. Um, and also some teams didn't didn't want to give them do their national anthem. Um, there were several teams that picked yeah. alternatives. Um, yeah. Okay. Not affectionate enough. Oh uh, well, I mean, I think. People have different viewpoints about, about nationalism and what nationalism is and whether <laughs> it's a good thing or a bad thing yeah. and whether you can have good nationalism. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it was d it was down to the teams and some teams chose to, to have something know. different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we decided to... We didn't think about not to having uh, the um, national anthem, but I think the, the, the main reason for the team as all different uh, individuals have uh, different ideas, but the main thing that the main thing that uh, uh, didn't let us think about if use it or not was the fact that we are going to sign it mm -hmm. in the um, uh, list in Italian, the language for the not uh, hearing people. Proper name in English, but I hope so. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's good because in Italy they don't recognize it as a language. So we want to display it and uh, show Port. everybody and give them importance. So it important. That was good. It was really nice. Mm -hmm. So how long did it take you, the team, to learn the? Um <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we had good teachers because we yeah. have a couple of guys uh, that um, are into roll derby and uh, they do speak uh, the sign language. So they had uh, their own uh, uh, boot camp. Uh -huh. <laughs> on the uh, yeah, on the. We sign. had a video too. Yeah. They made us a video too with all. Yeah, uh, yeah, the there was a video. Yeah, you're yeah. right. And uh, yeah, we all practice at uh, our home. And uh, and then uh, when we were together, we practiced all together. But uh, the first times they were 
hilarious because everyone was uh, signing <laughs> anything but uh, the, what they were supposed to do. So, <laughs> but you were in front of us uh, signing us. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was. So we were uh, following you. So. Yeah, but I also <laughs> didn't know what, what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to be confident, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I was supposed to be. <laughs> Grande, but it was good. It was good. <laughs> and, I, and I think since uh, there was a presentation not at this year's Iraq, but at the Iraq in twenty, the Iraq in twenty nineteen, um, about s including people in Royal Derby with with um, sign language. And I think there was a discussion about the Italian signing um, the the anthem there. So. Um, it, I think people 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 noticed, and it, it's been a yeah. good thing. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That was uh, our uh, goal. Yeah. It's good. That good. So yay, we can cheer up and go drink now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> First, yeah. every every moment is a good moment <laughs> to celebrate. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, Italy did Italy did do pretty well in the 2018 World Cup, though. I mean, you know, you. Um, uh, but so yes, so uh, I guess that's the commentating bit. Um, I don't know if we have anything else people want to talk about. Um, I think we covered uh, a wide uh, range of arguments. <laughs> I mean, I guess, I guess, um, looking ahead perhaps not to this year but to next year I mean is there a do we have feelings for how we want you think Italian Ronald W is going to develop because I mean at the moment you've got three WF2DA leagues I think I mean three yeah. I think it's, it's three yeah yeah I think it's yeah. three three For yes the Dianguanas uh, Arpis and the Bloody Wheels from Turkey Bloody Wheels yeah. yeah yes so yeah well for sure, I think from from Milan, there is a willing, you know, to widen the community as much as possible. Given the fact also that we are in a really big city with tons of things to do, this is something that every big city suffers because, of course, you you lack in visibility at, mm -hmm. at this point. And uh, still, roller derby is not really popular in Italy. In Italy overall, I mean, eh? so. Uh, but yeah, for sure, there's you know, uh, willing to move forward, growing bigger, and and you know also what Teresa said to support also other teams to you know widen the, their uh, their be knowledge and and uh, train together and practice or doing scrimmages that I think is a is a, is a goal for us. I mean, so to briefly jump off of that. Um, Italian roller derby NGB national governing body some kind of thing I didn't there is one at the moment is there yeah I think Federica has something because I think it's something that's in development um, yeah. cool yes. about about Lear yes yeah. yes no I, I think he was asking uh, sorry but I think he was asking about uh, the um, uh, relationship between uh, Lierd, so the Italian leagues, uh, and the national gover government body, so PS PIS. Uh, PIS. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in general, PIS. how this works. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We are working, we are we trying to organize a big tournament, but at the moment we stop it because we have some problems, you know. Mm. Uh, and we are trying to speak with the government to because roller derby doesn't be an important sport, you know. Mm -hmm. All the all the sports we skate are not considered the sport. So we are trying to speak with authority to mm -hmm. have more uh, visibility and to become an important sport. Not so important like uh, soccer, you know, but more important than now to obtain uh, more I don't know authorization to play or places. For example, in Sicily, it could be a real important uh, help for us to have some authority that uh, recognize the roller derby like uh, important sport. Mm -hmm. Because at the moment, uh, we have any authorization, any recogni recognize, I don't know. Uh, 
so we hope so that author authority can help us to have more visibility and um, nothing more can i add something mm -hmm. about yeah. this um i um uh, we had as a leard and i was there as Italy representative uh, we had a meeting with uh, the FISRA, that is like the governing body for roller skates in mm -hmm. Italy, that is affiliated to uh, other in the world, their similar names, <laughs> and uh, we are starting to speak with them, and because they are they are sending out email and uh, try to speak with us since here about this and try to have a collaboration, but they are doing this with all uh, European. Mm. Roller Derby, I know. So um, we had some meeting with them, and um, we are trying to build something. But um, uh, and it can be this tournament that um, uh, you are speaking uh, mm -hmm. about. But uh, we don't at the moment. We don't have a really. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if speak. Okay. We don't have uh, an agreement. We have to do that. We are seeing all the possibility, and uh, we have had requests from us uh, for things that we want to keep uh, um, as it is in roller derby. So the use of the uh, rules or the gender policy and mm -hmm. everything so we are at, uh, discussing at the moment all these things and they seem to be interested also with all our uh, if we can call that conditions and so we hope that this can go forward because as uh, we was saying before um, we need some help on the local territory as in South Italy they can train inside as she said before because they don't have structure but they have but they can use that so maybe with the help of a federation they can have access so our main goal about this is um, this kind of things so try to help the league to have more access to practice also because Anek can I add something? Yeah. Uh, Italian uh, uh, figure skating uh, is a very uh, well practiced sport. So probably being part of a of a bigger body of decisions such as uh, FISRA uh, can can give to the kids uh, that that's my hope a, a new choice for a, a sport on on wheels which will be not okay which won't be maybe figure skating but finally there will be also roller derby yeah for so sure another can. another option for kids not just ballet and soccer because let's be honest in Italy it's it's pretty standard in that yeah. when you are a kid i i think at the moment is a long shot because we mm, it's not so easy to have a junior league and is this all this process is not like uh, okay we make this agreement and you can have your own this, uh, league it's not like this it's just that we keep our federation but we try to work together so yeah it's from us so it's not so <laughs> straightforward but uh, no, i think yeah, yeah. i think if we, if we can have a collaboration it start growing and we will see if it works. Hope so. Hope, hopefully, I mean, yeah, yes, I mean, hopefully. it because is. We are aware of the situation uh, around Europe, mm -hmm. but we know that uh, every country has its different uh, 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 federation and uh, people on it and everything. So yeah, we will see. And I mean, I think the first thing you start is by talking, and it looks like it sounds like Italian Villa Derby already talks to itself. So. Um, that's the important thing. Um. Yeah, we are. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much uh, for giving us this opportunity, Sam. Well, thank thank you all for coming. Um, I will. It's been. A, I think hopefully it's been a good hour and a half. Uh, so thank you all for coming. Um, I will let you all go and do your other things now. Um,
maybe some off skates maybe some of the off skates training um, um and um hopefully we'll be back uh with another uh bunch of skaters from another region uh in our next version of this but for now this was italian roller derby i hope everyone's enjoyed watching it as well so thank you for, for my attendees for coming and thank you for you for watching thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.